All right. Welcome to episode 118 of Consignment Chats. This is a C Chats Spotlight, one of our favorites. So we have here um, Amy of Mama G's Consignment, and we are just so excited to talk with her today. If you guys are listening on podcast, she is on location in our store, which you can see if you're over on YouTube. So uh, Amy, welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're located to start us off. Well, I would love to. So um, Mama G's is in central Wisconsin, a really little town, Nielsville. It uh, is the home, though, of the world's largest talking cow. So if you ever need to come visit a really cool town, come to Nielsville. We have a cow. Put a quarter (laughs) in and she'll talk to you. (laughs) So... (laughs) Um, my store has been open for 15 months. Prior to that, I was a high school teacher. So I taught high school for 25 years. Uh, For six months, I did both jobs. And then um, just decided I was too burnt and needed uh, a change of pace. So I still have another job outside of my consignment store, but it's way less time than teaching. Wow. So you made, wow. So you made a big, big career change there. How do you think teaching prepared you for this? Did teaching prepare you for this? Oh my gosh. Yes. Because all I do is teach people how to get their consignments ready. (laughs) And so, right. Yeah. So think about all the time that you spent perfecting how to tell people to get their consignments ready. It's like, after you've taught for 25 years, you just, you just know how to explain things. So I feel like it was really great to have a a small learning curve. I can explain easily and clearly how to get their crap ready so I can sell it. (laughs) So that, so that brings us to, I I was going to jump right into it because I am so curious to hear about your business model. You do things a lot differently than the way Libby and I run our businesses. So what's your flow and how is that set up? So, I, and I, I have no idea if it's right or wrong, but it works. So this yeah. is how there is no right and wrong in consignment. That's the beauty of it. We're all nuts exactly. in our own special way. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, I always tell people there's a couple different options. If you want to consign, the first option is the option that makes you the most money. If you would like to consign, uh, you make an account online. And then you enter in all the descriptions of the items you'd like to sell and the price you would like it to be sold at. And the program I use actually makes price tags. They print the price tags and attach it to their items. And then once a month, I have a drop off. And so they bring their they bring their items already ready to go. Um, And what's the name of the system you use for that? It's my consignment sale. Okay. So I'm familiar with that model in the respect that we would run an annual sale for our children's elementary school and people Mm -hmm. would price and tag their own items. However, way back then we did it all by hands. We didn't use any software. So that is really, and it is a lot easier to, to run a business like that because that is the majority of what we do is, is tag and price and research. Correct. And I I love it because they set their own price. So Mm -hmm. there is no, nobody can haggle with me. I can't negotiate with any customers. I tell them that like, it's not mine. I didn't set the price. I'm just the person watching the store. So it really takes off all the pressure of people wanting to negotiate prices with me. Consigners are happy when it sells, they set their price. So it works out well. Yeah. So what kind of, so what kind of split do you do? Uh, if you don't mind sharing when you, okay. when you run it that way. So if they do all their own tagging, they bring their items in on drop off and I even make them hang up their own clothes. Like, <laughs> like I say, women's clothes is over here. Men's clothes is down this aisle. Make sure you put it with the right size. Cause if you put it with the wrong size, it'll never sell. Um, 
It's essentially just like you have like an antique mall and they're stocking their booth. They're just having a whole store set up and, and they have Correct. to put it in the appropriate spot. Correct. I like that. So they get 70%. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then I tell people, because there always are people that don't have printers, people that don't, don't have time to make tags, people that sure. don't want to make tags. I say, well, that's all right. I can work with you. If you bring your stuff to me, I'll take it for you. But then obviously the commission changes drastically because now I'm doing all the work and they sure. are just dropping it off. So if that's their choice, then I pay them 40% commission. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that was, that's about the same as, you know, what, what I do. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. But I love that option. They can process their own items. Now here's what I'm thinking. And the reason why this is so appealing it, when people can tag and price their own items, I would think they're probably going to be even more invested in your business and bringing people into your store than let's say a regular consignor, the people that are doing that 40% and you're doing all the work. I'm going to think they're probably not as invested. I mean, consignors are still invested and they're great, but I would think that initial level of investment and kind of like almost owning a piece of your, your store, your inventory. Right. And I love it because when I take pictures of stuff, people and post it online, people will share it and say, that's my shirt or that's <laughs> my toy. It's like so fun. People like sharing the stuff out and, and making sure to point out to their neighbors, my stuff is in the store this month. If you want my stuff, you got to go down to the store. I'm not having a garage sale this summer. Oh, yeah. No. I like that. Yeah. So, so how do you handle? Oh, go ahead, Samantha. Well, I was just saying the thing that scares me about them pricing their own items is what happens when it sits there for a while because it doesn't like, how do you make sure that things cycle through? So um, the consignment time period is 30 days. Okay. Okay. The stuff, I like it. The, stuff, the stuff is only here for a month. The last I found somebody that has a shorter time period than me. Everybody's always like, you only do 60 days. Like, are you crazy? Nope. And I'm like, yeah. I'm going to be like, well, Amy of Mom, Mama G says 30 days. So back it up. That's right. <laughs> the last Saturday of the month is always half off day. If it hasn't sold in the month on that last Saturday, it's half off. And when the store closes, I start sorting items. Uh, I give consigners the option to come pick up their unsold items. The majority donate. So I just... We start taking things off hangers and putting them in boxes and bags, and we donate to several local charities. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. And I'm sure that's a lot of work. I, I've done that. Then they've done that. I'm sure that's a, that's an insane amount of work, pulling things off the floor, right? It is, but because it's pretty much everything out, everything in, it's not too bad. Oh, good. Um, good. And, and I'm finding... As more people know about the store, I'm having to obviously take less and less down because we're selling more. So you have a whole new store, like all new inventory every month? Every month. Oh my God, I want to thrift there. Like this sounds Right? Great. Don't you totally want to <laughs> shop there? Yeah. That's one of my biggest pet peeves is walking in somewhere and be like, oh my God, I saw this stuff for the last three months. When are they going to yep. mark it down or get it out of here? Yep. Or Every month. And I have my regulars that come the first weekend of the month because they want to see the new stuff right away. I have yeah. my regulars that come the last Saturday of the month because they just want the discount and everything in between. I would be there for both. I love that. So I'm seeing behind you, it looks like you take a wide variety of items. What are what kind of items are, are you selling there? So I started out with a vision of being children's only, but uh, that quickly became a problem because other people were coming in and wanting to consign things that weren't children's and I had space for it. So I said, well, I guess I'll take it. I mean, I have some room in the store. And then that stuff started selling quicker than children's stuff. And I thought, oh, wait a minute, I'm onto something here. So now I do pretty much everything. Kids clothes, adult clothes, household items. Uh, we have a kitchen area we have sporting goods jewelry it's just you never never know that's the beauty of it you never know 
Wow. So yeah, people could just come in. I mean, I remember my storefront, we did a lot of everything and I would have people that would come in several times a week. And that would be like their downtime is they just like walk through the store and look at every item and just kind of hang out. Do you have any of those? Oh, definitely. (laughs) Oh, definitely. You know, the reason the reason this store is called Mama G's is because when I was a teacher, I would say things like, let mama help you. Hold on, hold on. Let mama help you. And so the kids started calling me Mama G. My my last name starts with a G. And so it's really fun. Because I have a lot of parents of kids that I've taught that shop here. I have grandparents of kids that I've taught that shop here. And so they do they there are people that come and grab my stool from behind the counter and they're going to be here for an hour. Like I might as well make a pot of coffee because we're going <laughs> to. <stand>. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it, it really has become a gathering point of our main street. So. Oh, that is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Wow. So how many, how many square feet are you about to house all of them? Um, I, well, I don't know. I'm bad with numbers. No, I know it's all right. That's all right. Numbers. But I think it's like, 1300 square feet does okay. that sound like a real number okay it sounds like a real number yeah yeah <laughs> wow. so have you broke your own rule are you ever like at the end of the month you're clearing everything out and you're like oh wait maybe this needs another month and you like do you make exceptions for mm-hmm. things I I yep sometimes I have consigners that will want to consign two months in a row and I let them do that and then their stuff from the first month can stay. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, that's neat. All right. Does it get marked down at the end of the first after 30 days? It goes yep. into the sale, but then it'll just stay on the floor for another 30 days and run through the cycle again. Correct. Correct. Wow. All so right. is everything barcoded like at your point of sale that you just scan? It prints out the barcodes? Yeah, yep. it has it like a UPC barcode. Yeah. Oh wow. And I'm the tags are for forever. The tags are good forever. So sometimes I'll have people consign in January and then they'll come back again in April and they might bring some items back and that's fine. Okay. So but, they, and they're still in the system, like the same tags. Yeah. And, yeah. Wow. Wow. My head is like spinning because this is just like so different <laughs> and so fun. I and know. It sounds like you're just really invested. I saw on your Facebook page, which I then of course had to share in our community that uh, you recently won an award. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, I was very humbled and surprised uh, to find out I was the entrepreneur of the year for our town. Now we have a small town, so don't get too excited, but it no, I'm sorry. Excited. I'm sorry. I'm really excited it because was. sometimes it means more in a small town and it means way yes. more people than in a big town. So that's, yeah. That's even better as far as yeah. I'm. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. So how do you, um, do you have help that in the store? Is it like just you? How do, how do you do that? So um, <laughs> on a whim one day, I uh, asked my husband if he would help at the store for a little bit. And, and he's not real excited to do a lot of things. But um, <laughs> you guys, he does my cleaning for me. Yes. Gosh, that's isn't, beautiful. Isn't that awesome? He gets off of work and there's an hour between when he needs to pick the kids up from school. And so I give him a key and he will come in once a week and mop my floors. Mm. He's so great. So <laughs> we, we, call him, we call him Papa G and uh, I call him that on my Facebook live videos. And it's to the point now, like he was at Subway recently and this grandma like lady said oh my gosh aren't you papa g aren't you mama g's husband (laughs) that's awesome i like the fact that it was mama g's husband yeah (laughs) Yeah. right (laughs) you know who's in charge there that's right so he helps with my cleaning i have um two kids that are still at home my oldest has already moved out but my my two kids that are still at home will help um usually pretty happily and then, really uh, what's your secret um the, our neighbor's store sells um those teas and shakes and I'll always buy them their choice 
Oh, bribery. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> There's usually the tea in the morning and they're fine. Oh, wow. I love it. Nice, so. supportive family. Yeah. Yep. And then I, I do have a couple former students that'll help me out on a Saturday if I want to go camping for a weekend or I'm going to be gone for stuff. So yeah. Nice. So Part-timer. why consignment? How, like, wh- how did you end up running a consignment business? Oh my gosh. It's the craziest story. So I, I was teaching when COVID happened and we all got sent home and Mm -hmm. it took our school a little while to figure out what are we supposed to be doing? So I started cleaning closets because I didn't really have much of anything to do. Your own closets or other people's? My own, my own closet. Okay. So I cleaned all the closets and had all this stuff. And I thought this is way too good to just give away. Mm Mm-hmm. I need to figure out a way to sell this at some point in time. And my friends were doing the same thing. Like we all were kind of motivating each other to clean out these closets. And then I had remembered a consignment sale I had been to in a larger town. And I just started researching and found that my my consignment sale. And I told my friends, I think we should do this. This system is pretty affordable. Let's, you know, the five of us have a consignment sale, we'll rent a venue. So we yeah. did, and you know, after COVID finally cleared out, it took a while, right. but eventually we had just a weekend sale and it was great. And then more people wanted to consign. So then we had another sale in uh, the fall. And at that sale, one of the consigners is a realtor. And she said to me, you know, there's a storefront downtown and I'm good friends with the lady that owns it. Let's hook you guys up. I think you should open a store. Oh, I have chills. I have chills. That's how it happened. I I actually rented the building for the month of December. I was going to do just a December pop-up. I asked some of my good consigners to put their stuff in the store just for the month of December. And at the very end of December, I had a lady from town that I didn't even know walk in and ask how much my rent was. And I said, why? And she said, well, I'm going to write a check so you can have rent for January. We need you. And so she paid my rent for the month of January. And I've been here since. Oh my Are you kidding? No. <laughs> Wow. Our jaws I, wow. dropped. Never heard a story like that one before. Oh, that that's is awesome. Wow. So do you, and now it's, is it just you that runs it and your friends went yeah. back to work and <laughs> yeah, they okay. were like, you take it girl, you, <laughs> you do your thing. I, I don't even know where to go from there. I'm just like, you, you found such an awesome system though, to keep it, to keep it going so that you can be the sole person that's doing this with a little bit of help and, and really making the consigners work for you. I love it. Right. I, and they're so well-trained those that come on a regular basis. Like they know mm-hmm. I'm going to quick look over the stuff and make sure there's no stains and that kind of stuff. And then they just go to town, start hanging stuff up. And then they teach the others that are new. Oh, let me show you where that goes. I just, it's great. We just have a great time at drop-off together, getting the store ready. I want to start. That's a why you're like still that, in the right? store tonight. That's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're a community within a community. Correct. That's wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. It's- so you did all like, what was the point you just decided after COVID you weren't going back like what was what was that tipping point where you thought I'm I'm just gonna I'm going for it I'm doing this I you know there were a lot of just things that happened that I was like okay I don't believe in coincidences like there are just too many things that are happening that are pointing towards that this risk needs to be taken and so I thought what the heck? I, what the heck? I mean, I spent 25 years. I'm going to cry. I spent 25 years telling kids to take a risk. Don't let anyone tell you no. Why would you settle for less? But I was. So I was like, to heck with it. I'm going for it. 
that's really um, inspirational. That's awesome. Yeah. You were, yeah. Cause it's a scary leap. It's a scary leap. Absolutely. It's a scary leap. I always say like opening your own business and making that decision is like jumping off a cliff and like, there's no net. You don't know if there's a net, like you just don't know. You really don't right. know. And that's kind of what, like what it felt like to me. Um, yeah. I'm wondering if maybe that's what it felt like to you. Just yeah, absolutely. Something. Absolutely. But I, and there was no net, but there was definitely a support system. And I think that was a great help. Just good friends and good family. And it's like, like, I'm not good with numbers. I don't get numbers at all. I'm a people person. I'm not a numbers person. Oh, you're I like Molly. Friends. She should be here. <laughs> I, I have friends that are number people. They help me. They're the ones that say, you gotta, this has to change or this, you know what I mean? So. And it sounds like you're open to that. Like you're open to that and you know, you know enough to know what you don't know and what you're not good at. Correct. Yeah. Like for me, it's the opposite. Like I'm good with numbers, but I'm not good with creative things. And like in the store, like setting the floor and, and, and seeing all that and envisioning all that. But, you know, like I knew enough that I wasn't good at that and I was going to need some help with that. And mm-hmm. because as an entrepreneur, I mean, you, you know, you guys, we wear every, at some point we have to wear every hat, whether we like to or not. Uh, when oh. you're a startup, you just have to, you have to know a little bit about everything, <laughs> but mm-hmm. being open to help and, uh, Sometimes constructive criticism is, is really, is really helpful. And that's how I found consignment chats. And I mean, just by getting online and looking for resources and they exist. And that was how I, I got a lot of great ideas, just learning from other people, what worked for them. It has to work for me. If it worked for them, usually. Usually. Yeah. (laughs) Or you learn about the mistakes other people made and you think, oh yeah, I don't want to do that. (laughs) We're good both ways, I think. So when you're not at the store and you're not doing all this, what do you do in your downtime? Do you not have any downtime? I I don't have a ton of downtime. So, um, my parents uh, own a dairy farm. I'm in Wisconsin. So of course, I say, that's the most cows. Wisconsin answer ever. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I don't milk many cows anymore, but every once in a while, I got to help at the farm. One of my uh, kids actually works at the farm. So I do a lot of um, driving because my kids are young enough. They don't have driver's license, but they have jobs. So <laughs> little bit of an uber driver I always say uh so a little bit of farming I uh, we do camp in the summer a lot of camping um we show cows all summer like we train our cows oh, how I to... saw something like that on your Facebook page I wasn't sure I'm like is this the right person <laughs> <laughs> yeah that'd be us awesome we... wow so we just stay busy yeah. I get that. My daughter's a 4-H kid. She has cows and sheep yeah, and all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I grew up with cows in my backyard, so we're we're good. <laughs> we didn't own them, but yeah, it's <laughs> I'm part of that part of that uh rural mentality. So, are are you one of the only consignment stores in in your area? I am the only consignment store in my county. Ooh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I feel um, that. There, there's two other thrift stores in town, but a very different vibe. Um, mm-hmm. uh, people like people will say things to me like, I like your store because it's clean and it smells good and things are in good shape. You know, it's just, it's a different vibe. Um, it is people, very different than thrift. It yeah, is very, yeah. consignment stores are very different than thrift yeah. stores. Yeah. And then, you know, people come from all these other small rural communities around us because there is nothing like it. Wow. Very locally. So do you have plans to expand or you got any, any changes coming in the future or you just, you love everything where it's at and you're good to go for a while? Cause you, you haven't been doing this very long. No, I'm still learning. Um, The the only thing I'm working on right now is I'm I'd like to expand a little bit into the manly man section as I call it. 
I have noticed husbands that get drugged with their wives into the store and they have nothing to look at mm -hmm. or even dads that bring their kids in to get clothes or there's just nothing manly man here. So I'm on to, to that mission right now. I've been talking to consigners about what does your husband have that you want him to get rid of, or he needs to get rid of. And so we've been talking all kinds of trail cameras and tools and things like that, that we can add. Yeah. My husband would appreciate that. I drag him to a lot of stores. Exactly. <laughs> There's got to be something for the men. So yeah. I was recently at uh, one of our sea chatters, Matthew Miles and his wife recently opened a store by uh, by me. So I, of course, had to go visit them. Yeah. And one of the cool things I thought they did with their store, I never saw it. Now they don't do clothing. It's like collectibles and things like that. But they have a lot of, he has like all the man stuff and she has all like the lady stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But they, in their store, they did, like you would be walking around and there would be like, a shelf of the women would be interested in the next one would be men and then women, oh. then men, then women. So they could walk around together. And they said, it's been very successful. Oh, I yeah. never saw that, heard of that, but it was, it was a really cool idea. So like husband and wife would be walking together and, you know, she would be standing in front of this and he would be standing in front of yeah. like, you will be standing in front of the NASCAR stuff and she would be standing in front of the pretty glassware or whatever. Not to stereotype, but they can still spend time together, but they don't have to sit there and pretend they're interested in what the other person's looking at. Yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> or on opposite ends of the store. <laughs> right. Yes. Right. Normally my husband just finds a chair somewhere and he just sits and waits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's gonna that's gonna be really neat. I think you'll see we had a lot of men shoppers in my store. And we still, I mean, we still online have a lot, a lot of men. It's always mm -hmm. a little surprising how many um men so all right I, I know I have a million questions for you I'm sorry and I'm like rapid firing I love it but you're a teacher you can handle like, this just say, like like a schooler. Keep them coming. <laughs> so you're brick and mortar primarily brick and mortar I've seen you do uh you do you do the live videos like kind of like a tour of your store uh mm -hmm. tell us about like a little bit about how social media and online like what you do online and how that plays into your storefront and marketing uh so I primarily use Facebook uh, because I'm old and that's the social media that I know and I just stick with it I do like to use the Facebook lives I do a tour of the store usually every weekend uh, and those go well. I have people that now come in and, you know, I made a list of everything I saw on the video. Can you show me where it is? So oh, wow. it worked. Um, and then I also do a weekend uh, children's clothing sale. Every Saturday, I take pictures like of two to three items in each size category and post those as, you know, like one big post of clothing for sale and then um, people can comment that they want to buy it and come pick it up in the right. store or or I ship it that's what I was going to ask now do you do any shipping like if people are listening to this and they're like I want a piece of mama g's like how do you yeah. you're all set up to ship and people yeah. can just contact you on yeah. Facebook and yeah actually I have a uh I've never met her in person she, I mean she's just a dairy farmer that somehow found me and she'll send me a message. Um, kids need spring coats. What do you got? You know, and she'll give me sizes and I'll send her videos or pictures. And I, so people tell me kind of what they need and I try and show them what's available. And if they're interested, we arrange payment and I ship it. The post office is right across the street. It works out really well. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and they get a little personal shopping experience. That's reminding mm -hmm. me of um, Michelle up in uh, Prince Edward Island. Uh, she was doing that for a lot of her um, customers that were, you know, across Can the other side of Canada. And okay. she would just, yeah, she would do a personal shopping. She would take the phone around the store sometimes and just do like a personal shopping trip uh, for people and then mail it out to them. Mm -hmm. Great. So we can shop with you from afar. I love Anytime. That. Yes. I see on the uh, wall behind you some pretty cool looking hats. Are hats popular in Wisconsin? <gasps> that goofy one. Goofy. Oh my gosh. Does that have the teeth hanging down? 
when you put it on? I gotta get it. (laughs) Oh, she's literally shopping. Libby, come on. (laughs) My sister had one of those when we went to Disney World when we were kids. Yes. Oh my gosh. And she never took it off. She slept with Um, it on everything. You need to model it clearly. (laughs) I don't know what you're... (laughs) I mean, that's adorable. That's great. That's a cruise hat around here. People get those and bring them on the cruises when they, cause they have like themes and stuff oh. and it for $3. There we go. Three, three dollars. All right. Yeah. I don't want to shop, but I'm going to go ahead oh. and uh, hook up with you online <laughs> after this so I can get that hat for my sister because it is one of my favorite memories. <laughs> That's <Right>. hilarious. <laughs> This might turn into like a very expensive podcast here. I was going to say, people are going to want to come on here now just so we can shop their store. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh my gosh. That's how easy it is. And, and how that's my customer service. Mama G serving it up. <laughs> oh, wow. All oh. right. So in closing, I need to ask you the most important question. And I believe you might've already answered it, but maybe not. What is, what are you most proud of about your business? I, I think what I'm most proud of is the connection to the community and the fact that even if it didn't sell, the item didn't sell and it didn't generate income for the consigner or I, a lot of them get donated and, you know, I donate to a local women's shelter and then to a local thrift store that's connected to a church and those they're just good it, it's just really builds the community in other ways and I think that's the part I like the most is that it just this store keeps giving and giving and giving I'm so glad you're proud of that because I mean we're definitely proud of that see yeah. I thought you were gonna say I thought you were gonna say the risk you took in opening it that you jumped and took your own advice <laughs> But uh, wow, all right, you kind of surprised me there. I mean, they're both very impressive things, but that connection to community is just, yeah. is amazing. You and, know, I'll, yeah. I'll tell a, a great example. One of our consigners is a kindergarten teacher in a neighboring town. And one of her students, their family had a fire about a month ago. Mm. And she contacted me and wanted to know about getting some stuff for the kids. I said, absolutely. I said, they're going to get a ton of donations right now because they just had the fire in a month. Have her contact me. And so the last Saturday of the month after the sale, she came, get whatever you need. There's no cost. Just whatever you need. Take it. Yeah. I mean, I've had, yeah, I, I think that's so smart to, you know, wait, I have wait a month because people get so many donations and they mm-hmm. don't understand like how overwhelming that is because it's not necessarily stuff they can wear or need mm-hmm. and just to be able to give them. I always did like, like vouchers. Cause I'm on, I'm mm-hmm. on like a shopping voucher, just pick out what you want, what you need. And um, yeah, that's amazing to be able to, to provide that. I love that. Yeah. That's what I love about Mama G's. Yes. I love everything about Mama G's. This is great. (laughs) Thank you. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today and share your your business model and your story. We do more in depth, see it with C-Chats. And um, I would love to have you back at some point where we can go over actually how your how your business works, because I'm sure there's going to be a million questions about how people tag their own items, because I think it's there are people out there that do it, but it's definitely the minority. So I think probably uh, they're going to want you to set an example because you are such a shining example. You know, how also. If you guys can't wait for the follow-up, Amy <laughs> is in our community. So join yes. our Facebook community, which is linked below, and ask questions in there. Interact with her. She's she's in there. Yep. Happy, happy to answer. All right. Well, thank you very much. If you have a drink handy, we can cheers. If I got not- nothing. <laughs> goofy. Cheers with Goofy. That's okay. Goofy. Cheers. <laughs> thank you for letting me shop.
<laughs> Joining Libby, Molly, and Samantha, the ladies of Consignment Chats, as we build a resourceful community of collaborative resellers. Find all the ways to connect with us on consignmentchats.com. Episodes are available on YouTube and anywhere you get your podcasts. In addition, join our free private Facebook community.